Yo guys, I've got a spark that I'm going to use to reignite the fire for a brand new episode of a core inversion lock here on the channel. The series where I take the 16 cores from Skarnas Trap Team, which are swapped out based on the specific element of the area. So whenever an element pops up, I must swap out for one of the cores corresponding to that element and cannot swap out again until a new element appears. And you know, if an element pops up and both of the cores of the element are dead, then I need to remain as the sign I'm currently playing as. Likewise, that situation also occurs whenever a villain element pops up. Um, and this can be a big problem because whenever a Skarner is defeated in battle, or a defeat in battle even, they are classed as dead and cannot be used again. So that's the general gist of the um, core inversion lock rules. They are traditional lock rules, but with inverted colors to make things a lot more difficult because it's hard to distinguish villain attacks on the background and it's harder to concentrate due to the pure chaos that's on the screen, uh, at least visually. So we're gonna press the skip button to get that deep stew out of here so we can head into the first level of this final portion of the session right here for Secret Suits on Supreme Sting, one of my favorite levels of this game, so I can't wait to tackle this. This white feather is gonna be really hard. We have an arena to deal with towards the very end, which is far from easy. Oh, but that smell is awful. Yeah, it's not the greatest no smell now, is it, Flynn? Oh yeah, I guess that's exactly what they have being a sewer and all. Okay, new plan. Yeah, what else would a sewer have? It's kind of like, you know, implied of an aim on. Yeah, I'm gonna need it. Try not to lose your lunch. Now, I lost that already from your terrible pilot from the skills, but anyways, uh, for once I remembered not to skip the cutscene so we can get straight into this uh, level right here. favorite core in the portal right now, so if those of you are wondering, yes, Blades is my favorite core. I love the fact that he's an amalgamation of a dragon and a knight, especially since the mythology. Um, knights are traditionally ones who go around slaying dragons, so the fact that you are a dragon dressed up as a traditional figurine that would slay a dragon. The irony there is just really well designed, and it's really just overall a really well designed character who's thoroughly thought through. Picture that, I'm playing a Skarners game and I'm talking about Skarners well playing a Skarners game. That seems rather strange, don't you think? But man, there's so many things with Word Strange in it. You know, you got Doctor Strange, which hilariously enough is a movie of MCU. Not one of its best, but it's a movie with it all the same. And um, I actually had a PE teacher, known as Mr. Strange. Uh, so of course we called him Mr. Strange, but he so was um, occupied with the wrong profession. He should have became a doctor instead, so then he could have been the real-life equivalent of Doctor Strange. So yeah, that is what we call unfortunate. Well, it's far less unfortunate, however, are these chompies that I have the right to a Bruce to fully murder right now. Anyway, one of the other thing we have right now to fill up the layout with, uh, so that there's much less empty space, is a power right below me, which gives me the opportunity to revive a defeat scar at any time to bring in a Hornbass Wilden to heal up a Skarner between combat scenarios or, or we can bring in Tussle Sprout to utilize for a single use um, until his timer runs out but either way all these power can only be used once so they need to be used sparingly. Oh yeah we'll be taking every last part at all right now. <laughs> Boom, we'd be extinguishing the blue fire, which is kind of ironic because, you know, normally it's blue kind of stuff, like water that does truly extinguish fire, but now we are extinguishing the fire that looks like it's already extinguished based on the colour palette it's utilised. I am Ignite the Fire here, we are here to start fires, not put them out. At least that's what the channel name would of course imply. I don't actually go around um, starting fires and stuff, and I can do it either. Don't commit arson, it is a crime. There you go, there's our moral of the story. The moral of the story is don't be an idiot and break laws. You have uh, all of your life to live in far more effective, lawful ways of earning money. Anyway, we're going to be skipping that deep stew and be swapping out for Treadhead right here. Oh yeah, tread and Shred indeed, my friend. There goes, we grab an egg gold right there. <laughs> and destroy some choppies, one of my favourite activities to conduct. It's funny how, you know, grammarly that sentence is still correct because conduct is a word that can be used for separate opinions. You know, you can conduct activity, which means partake. Um, and 
you know, technically speaking, that definition doesn't change because whenever something conducts heat or electricity, it just means that that um, specific thing it's conducting can easily flow through it. You know, it can easily partake in activity. So, such as something being electrified, you can class something being electrified as an activity. So, something which conducts electricity is just partaking in that um, electricity based activity, you can go as far as saying. You know, despite the fact these are inanimate objects, you know, they can be used as an act activity in this um, scenario that I'm presenting before you. But yeah, now with my English going crazy, abs uh, through the absolute youth, you could go as far to say. Um, we're going to move on from that and then jump on over here, you know, uh, just ignoring the fact that it makes no sense that Treadhead can even jump. Uh, Knowing his drive machine and all. Yeah, it appears that I cannot uh, have the mental capacity to platform well enough because I fell into the water not once but twice, acting as if um, second time would be any different because that's not the dictionary definition of insane or anything like that. You know, doing the same thing multiple times and hoping for a different effect every single time. Yeah, that's got nothing to do with insanity whatsoever. I'm a perfectly sane person right here. So here there is a very famous clip you can conduct where you can play as the villain throughout the entire level by swapping to them and then at the very end of their villain timer you jump down and the villain timer is basically infinite because your villain can only physically swap out on a solid ground but because you're constantly falling in this here scenario there's no solid ground for the villain to actually tag out of so therefore the villain timer remains infinite so your Skarner can't take any damage since you're playing as a villain the entire time but who doesn't take damage and the only way to revert back to your Skarner and basically finish the glitch is to either tag or um, fall in water. Anyway we're not going to be conducting that glitch because that glitch is basically cheating like we have the capacity to because I have the system sprout power up so I could have used that right there and then at the very end of his time I could have that glitch. You know that would have just been taking a rule uh, and you know cheesing it, uh, taking advantage of, of that rule a lot. But again that's kind of cheap, you know it would have been quite clever for me to cheese but you know I'd rather play this more legitimately and have you know more fun in my successes. And again I'm probably not going to use the power ups, I just want them now for the sake of um, filling out the layout. But if I don't need to use them then I just won't use them for the sake of saying that I still beat this lot legitimately even with power ups at my disposal. Boom, we got him. Okay, what we've got here, we've got some Shompies that are in need of defeating, so that's exactly what we're going to be doing. There you go, that's what we like to see, my friends. Hey, <laughs> yeah, boy, yeah, boy. <laughs> Take that, dude. Take that. Anyway, time to skip over that and a little quick scene right there and continue to jump across these little uh, platforms right here. Just jumping over platforms is what we like to see. <laughs> However, Rage Mage on the other hand a little uh, less much what we want to see. So he's a perfect gamer then, because you know everyone knows that if you don't have any sort of gamer rage up your sleeve, then you cannot be classed as a true, uh, tried and true gamer. Also, I have fallen in areas that I did not even know you could have uh, fall into right here. Fredhead's just got too much speed for his own good, baby. <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna blame that on the speed. I am. Oh wait a minute, we gotta do this, we gotta put that there and then we can take this bridge off. I forgot the puzzle for a moment there, but yeah, we want to grab this here, um, the sapphire, so that then uh, Torch can upgrade herself whenever she acquires gold next. So yeah, we appreciate the sapphire giving us some upgrade uh, discounts. I keep on forgetting to pick these up on all these levels, mind you. So that is what we call a distinguishable map head. No. Uh, yeah, let's grab that. Place it right on there. Sweet, and then be, uh, you know, completing some puzzles over here. 
You probably do remember correctly, but we're not going to even let you finish that deep stew right there because we're too busy pressing the best button of the video game. And I love the fact that the spark is blue in this, you know, it looks far more dangerous. Um, and it makes you really not want to hit the spark, you know, it's very clear that it will deal damage to you, unlike the light sparks, which aren't really too clear regularly. But that just has such a warmth to it, you know, not a um, cuddly kind of warmth, no a danger, watch out for this because it's more of a darker blue, you know, black normally uh, correlates with danger and all, that's normally what we gather from that there, um, colour mind you, and so now the magic ele elemental area has been triggered, it's time for us to swap out for Cobra Cadabra. I was hoping to get through more of that area before activating the magic element, but unfortunately that just wasn't meant to be. And as you can tell, Cobra Cadabra is back to his traditional name right here, which is what we like to see indeed. I mean, we could have swapped out Deja Vu, but Cobra Cadabra is at a higher level right now, so he's more likely to survive the arena that we'll pursue after we're done with this here villain. But foul, we'll get any to go as far to say. But yeah, my hopes for this is no deaths whatsoever. That would be so glorious for me being able to prove that Trap Team Deathless is possible. Oh boy, and here comes the Scrap Shooter. Boom, let's get him. This is what we like to see now, boys. But yeah, with a cast of eight characters, this game is definitely possible so long as you pick eight characters of each element. In fact, I would say you could probably even do this game with four, so long as you play your cards right, that is. But yeah, not all of the trap team cores are great, so that's why I felt like 16 was most appropriate, not to mention that created a very interesting square layout, because we have four characters by four characters, which is, you know, a 16 character square. And that just looks cool, you know, it looks uh, uniform and crisp and itchy, apparently. Despite the fact that I can't see it, my nose is still itching anyway. Ouch. Big ouch. There we go, we took them dudes out, which is what we like to see. Yeah, we like to see that a lot, in fact. Okay, time to skip the deep stew, as we always do. And there's actually some pizza over here, which we are going to be grabbing before jumping down the um, area right here to head towards the arena. But hey, what's funny about area and arena is that they both have the same letters in common, um, with the exception of the N. But once you take the N out of arena, I believe you get area. So naturally, you know, you guys know what's coming next. Area, arena, you know, they're basically the same thing. I once again to go back to my um, ingenious wordplay, my unrivaled wordplay amongst the entire the community. I definitely have the most extravagant word choice, and I'm also incredibly humble about it too. Let's not forget. Anyway, time to push these crates into place before I inevitably um, approach my demise. Oh, you know, I could also survive, that's also a possibility. It's the possibility that I hope we wind up an act to the bottom. So let's be pray, uh, placing this, well, into place. You know, if something has a placement that needs to be placed, then what other place would we put that placement and the placement that needs to be placed in? That just makes most logical sense to place it in its placement. And also jump when we need to. Yeah, we didn't fall into a purple goop this time. To be honest, the purple goop is far more terrifying than what it would be if it was green. You know, purple is a far more disgusting colour for liquid unless it's, you know, black currant juice. But otherwise, you know, purple as liquid is something that you definitely want to avoid. It's definitely not the most advertising of things. And you know what else isn't advertising? Deep stew, so we're just gonna skip straight through it. And head straight into the area battle. Oh, sorry, arena battle. It's gonna the same thing. You just take the end out of the arena, and it's area. I'm saying this again, just you know, for effect. Repetition puts emphasis on something. That's the exact effect that is achieved for repetition. And I feel as though I've achieved it all the same. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> boom, baby. Oh, I love this guy. He's a lot of fun. He's very good. I mean, I love the fact that he's a snake in a basket and he can watch out baby snakes in baskets. Look at the 
you don't really get more charming than that and it's funny how I use the word charm because he you know of course shoots out charms from his uh, magical flute right here saying that this character is charming is a bit of an understatement You will not hit me, and we will save that pretzel for later when I will inevitably need it. This as Thanos says, I am inevitable, but this time, you know, Thanos is speaking on behalf of pretzel. Because unfortunately, pretzel doesn't have a mouth, so it's unable, uh, incapable of speech itself even. But Thanos, on the other hand, who has a mouth and can say that he is of the inevitability, uh, inevitability. Well, you know, when Thanos said that he wasn't speaking about his self, he was speaking about that pretzel right like, yeah. Well, maybe he was speaking for Rat, you know, for Rat in the end game movie is the clear MVP. I mean, he saves Ant Man, which is the main reason for the time traveling uh, shenanigans of the film uh, in the first place. You know, without Ant Man, the Avengers never would have discovered Pym Particles that even came up with the plan for time traveling. Uh, so that's inevitably what led to the universe being saved, uh, thanks in no small part to that incredible Rat. So yeah, maybe it was just the rat speaking through Thanos, because the fat, uh, the rat even, I was about to call it fat then, <laughs> big youth, but no, that rat, having godly powers of possession, would make literal sense. In fact, I don't think there is anything in the MCU that would make any more sense than that rat, you know, if the rat is basically a god amongst men, his power levels is beyond that of um, god tier, you know. If the Avengers had to fight that rat rather than Thanos, they would have been screwed, screwed I tell you. So the Avengers are quite lucky that they were left with Thanos instead. Likewise, Thanos is lucky that he got left with the Avengers, because if his army had to, you know, take down that rat, oh boy. They never would have won that fight, to say the least. You know, the odds definitely would have been sacked against him in that instance. I might be a Skarner, but that doesn't make me as powerful as a rat, far from it. You know, a rat against an entire army of Skarners, once again, that is also uh, an incredibly unfair fight. The Skarners, you want to have a chance, not even being nighter, you have a chance against a mighty that rat. You know, without a hint of sarcasm, you're a shadow of that. But yeah, the fact that that rat saved my favourite character in the MCU makes the rat like my second favourite character in the entirety of the MCU. Like seriously, nothing can you can take number one slot besides Atman for me, but that rat is definitely a close number two. The surface dweller shows promise to be sure. Yeah, I suppose I do. Can't wait to defeat the rest of these guys though. Not my eye. Have we even took a single hit this arena? Editor Ignite, please correct me on this, because if we get through this entire arena without getting hit a single time. <laughs> That's just showing off at this point. <laughs> That's just kind of mean to the enemies, um, mind you. I mean, who else would I be ne uh, being mean to? Besides the enemies, they're the only en people that I'm actually beating up in this instance. I'm, uh, instance, I'm not beating you, you up. You're watching this. How could I possibly be beating you up? Therefore, you know, you're not being directly impacted by my supreme weapons right now or any of the enemies. I believe I didn't get hit once that entire arena battle. Not once. It was almost as if I was doing the um, arena challenge where you're supposed to not get hit, you know, the one hit uh, show or whatever it's called. You know, maybe I did get hit so the editor can, well, in editing, uh, future editing night can, of course, take a clip of me getting hit, put it in slow motion and basically just expose me. If you guys aren't seeing any of that, it basically means that uh, Editing Ignite has confirmed exactly what I suspect, that I did not get hit a single time, and that is beyond glorious at this point. 
I think I earned that, don't you? Okay, we have arenas right here, you know, Boom Shanks fighting down uh, Wolfgang right here. Oh, and here comes Dr. Crankcase, do you kind of love, love the sound effect even of his legs uh, running towards them? They're all synced up and realistic for what the legs are made out of, you know, that's how wood sounds upon uh, one floor when it hits it. Also, ow, that really hurt my hand, why did I do that? That, that's pretty simple, that is. You oh, dear me, we don't want to have to stand up to that. No, 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 no. Wait, I have a solution. We can replace the stinky goo with this. Yeah, that seems like a suitable replacement right there. You know, the perfect substitute for all that stink quality right there, some stinky cheese. Yeah, just casually got to wait 10,000 years for our power source of fuel to not let them. Yeah, time traveling, no problem whatsoever, you know, I'm, I'm sure that's no uh, hard task for us. You mean I can travel through time? I don't want to do that, I don't want to be stuck here in this current predicament with a current pandemic going on. I want to jump through time, you know, where's my time travel capabilities? I am the portal master after all. I kind of wish that Skyler's Attack of Time Traveling a whole lot more, though. It's why I actually had an idea around a uh, time traveling uh, oriented Skyler's game once. Which I wouldn't say into the edit, but I don't want to put too much pressure on Editing Knight, you see. You know, I'm sure a future Editing Knight will appreciate me for it. Or, you know, he's gone on ahead and done the edit anyways, because he's just a good, uh, good person like that. And he did a great job with the edit. I'm sure he did a great job with the edit regardless. Anyway, opening up presents we shall not because we are far too busy. First of all, skipping deep stews, and second of all, heading into the work and workshop to end off the episode. I shall, but first things first, I gotta skip that deep stew. Oh boy, is it satisfying to get that deep stew out of the way? Beyond it, in fact. We are gonna watch through this cutscene as we always tend to. Mother said I'd never be able to make friends, but I proved her wrong. I made hundreds of them out of wood. Yeah, I don't think wood classifies as friends, my friend. We have just chaos of friend. What kind of mysterious world is this? Also, I love the fact that even the poster right there is inverted right now. Right. <laughs> yeah, that seemed better days. You could go as far to say. you making friends out of wood thing. I've seen enough. I demand you take me down there at once. That's not cool, dude. You don't just make the manners like that. That's very childish and naive of you. Oh, that would be unfortunate. It'd be awesome if it did, because I too can really go for Chiro right now. Anyway, it's time for us to move on past that orangey fountain of, you know, fantasy goodness and uh, move on to these pushing blocks. I don't know why blocks is so much fun to say like that, I suppose it just is. Anyway, it's time to skip that deep stew. Uh, observe Copacadabra's awesome art animations once again. I'm not even conduct this puzzle the way it's meant to be conducted because we're not going to push that crate into place uh, since we have the power of the jump button. So yeah, we have reached the rail car repair section, a deep stew for us to skip, and a fire elemental area to boot once, of course, the actual element changes itself. Oh, there it is, the trigger for us to swap over to Trailblaze and making his debut in this series. However, this isn't the debut for his inversion colour palette because I played as him for that initial uh, colour inversion, uh, inversion video I did. So, you know, we get to return to this guy's awesomeness, who's actually one of my favourite inverted uh, characters because, of course, the flame coming down his back all dark blue. And blue fire burns hotter than orange fire. So naturally it just makes the character look a lot more menacing and uh, just cooler with the sharp contrast and all. Okay, we're just gonna, you know, push that guy back so he can be killed off by the train. Apparently take a hit to the face and then, you know, use our fireballs to finish this guy out. Which is what we are talking about, my friends. 
Boom, baby. Okay, we have some pizza for later on, but that's exactly what I'm going to be saving it for later on. Uh, because at the moment we still have pretty high health, so I'd rather save that for should we need it after taking a few hits. Uh, speaking of taking hits... Two uh, pieces of food right there because we went from 148 to 778, uh, which is a difference of 600, which therefore would acquire two pieces of food because 300, which is the equivalent of one piece of food, uh, times by two is 600, which is exactly how much we healed. So, yes, that's what we call some conveniently timed uh, food drop me trying to. And I couldn't be more satisfied with my care. I'm sorry, I just had to make a big Hero 6 reference. After all, there is literally a character. In here, there is this bump, and you know what uh, Baymax does? He fits bumps. Blah, 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 blah. Anyway, it's time for us to focus on Scrap Shooter and not the movie which stole How to Train Your Dragon's Oscar. Yeah, that's right, How to Train Your Dragon 2 actually won the Oscar, but you know, Big Hero 6 stole it from them because let's be honest, Big Hero 6 is a good movie, but it's nowhere near as good as How to Train Dragon 2. That movie is more emotional, it's better written, it has a much better soundtrack, that's for sure. You know, his character development is far off the charts, and as a sequel, it is a perfect sequel, expand upon the world and developing characters in a way that doesn't forget about their previous development from prior films, but it still, um, you know, expands upon them further, and it wraps up its own short story in and of itself, you know, it's more than just a setup for a third movie, it still has its own movie, which has a beginning, a middle, and an end. So that's what makes How to Train Dragon 2 such an incredible movie, and my favourite of all time video is far uh, to say, in fact, now I'm going to be skipping that deep stew right now. And in the process of skipping that deep stew, that's going to leave me more time after I'm done with this series to watch How to Train Dragon 2 now that I've got myself in the mood for it. Oh, boy, am I running low on, on health right now. Come on, Trailblazer. I do not plan to make it my first death. Then again, I don't think any death uh, has planned to be my first, but you know, they always happen still all the same. <laughs> well, that's one way to avoid uh, an angry pack of enemies. Okay, so we didn't defeat all of the shield shredders, but we're just going to leave those guys behind. <laughs> we're going to leave them trapped in the corner, wondering where it was we went after we snuck right around them. Because, you know, while we fight enemies that don't need to be fought, that's just taking an unnecessary risk right now. That's what that is. And as always, uh, with these looks, for low risk, we take the higher we are rewarded for it. Because the less likely we are of dying, and the more likely we are to survive, which is the exact uh, aim of a lock. <laughs> anyway, Trailblazer is still alive, but well, how much longer? We've got a lot of um, spinning dudes to deal with now. You know, ones that are invincible during their spin, which can't be any more annoying if they tried, and we have 52 health to deal with said enemies right now, so if we get through this, uh, calling it a clutch would be an understatement. Why can't these guys just die when you need them to? <laughs> Talk about the ultimate Tom Cruise, bro, but that felt like, you know a clip out of the Mission Impossible movie, you know, sneaking around our opponents and all. I mean, we've still got to deal with this uh, guy right here, so let's not fix anything. Um, but yeah, here's the thing with Trap Team, it's far less difficult if you play it smart. And that's what we've been doing, so that's why we haven't had any deaths up until this point. You know, we could have played this whole world, though. we could have gone back to finish off the Shield Traders, but we didn't. And that is what is leading to our ultimate victory right now. I would skip over this guy if I could, but I can't. Actually, can I? I thought this was an, um... I, f I was under the impression that that was an, um... Enemy bounce pad, so it only unlocks after you defeated all of the enemies in the vicinity. 
But it turns out that is not what it was. We could just bypass those enemies altogether and allow Trailblazer to survive um, to the fight another day. Um, and in the process, swap out the Chopper now that the Element has changed out the tech. And of course, we can swap out the Chopper because we don't need to maintain the Treadhead who was used for the previous tech segment since that was from an entirely different level altogether to reinforce the rules, so to say. So come on Chopper, now all you gotta do is get through the entirety of the Dr. Crank Cage boss fight unscathed. You know, how hard could it be? Please, let's just pretend I didn't say that, I would hate to jinx myself for such stupid uh, commentary having came out of my mouth right now. Okay, here we go, let's play this smart, let's listen to my own advice. Okay, there we go. As those guys done, so now all I gotta do is keep my distance and the chopper. That's exactly what I can do with the mic, or should I say the dynamite, of my missiles. Oh, we can't skip this deep stew. In fact, it's not even much of deep stew because there's no dialogue to go around. So it's more so like a cinematic, so therefore I suppose it's a good thing I didn't skip it because the cinematics have been for a few things that I haven't skipped uh, this here um, inversion lot, mostly because I actually want to see the. Um, Cinematics play out with the inverted colors because man, that opening that scene in the inverted colors was epic, as they say. You know what else says epic a lot? Uh, the movie of that title. Okay, what's well, not going to take some time uh, getting used to because it's basically just habit at this point is pressing this button and escape to get rid of the deep stew as soon as ASAP. Let's be picking up this bomb right here and blowing up all this stuff over here. Nice, that is what we like to see, my friends. <laughs> do it again, I plan to do that, Chaos. I was very good now, wasn't it? I, I was quite proud of it too there, Chaos, not by line. Anyway, getting through this core inversion lock is going to be very difficult, meeting and moving on to late levels, because Undead Scar doesn't need to fight both Golden Queen and Wolfgang. So for both, my Undead Scar to get through both those scenarios is going to be tough, to say the least, but it is possible. With some epic gamer skills, that is. There we go, finish those guys off. Man, it sure is a good thing that I'm ending off the session after this because my phone cannot take any more Thor Trade War episodes. You know, my phone goes to the face cam right now. Okay, all we're gonna do is just keep out of the way of the crosshairs of those enemies that are firing on us, you know, it makes sense, you know, if we're not on the crosshairs, then we don't get hit when they fire from us, it's as simple as that. I'm doing Chopper a simple favour and remaining outside of crosshairs, and a simple favour is yet again a movie, um, or a name of the movie, made by Paul Feig, I think his name is, it's Paul Feig. I, I am unaware of what the director's name is, all I know is that a simple play, a favour is a very good movie of his. Throw an Anna Kendrick and I want to say Blake Lively or Emily Lively, you know, some of those names. I'm sure Edson and I will correct me. By the way, those two have incredible chemistry. The actual mystery surrounding the movie is constantly compelling, and the twists and turns keep you invested thoroughly to make for something that's well crafted and really enjoyable to watch. And, and as I said earlier, very well acted, especially with the charm that two characters possess and the chemistry that they have running off one another. Uh, yes, that would be us, unless there's someone else in the vicinity also known as the Scarlet that you've heard so much about. I mean, I would hope you've heard so much about us, considering that you were captured by them in the first place. Hey, let's see what you got, pal. 
But what else would you expect me to showcase what I got in a battle with all around combat there, Dr. Crank Pace? I'd be kind of concerned if you wanted to see something besides my uh, combat skill in this combat based uh, arena. You can call this arena. You know, even if there's far less enemies to deal uh, with, you know, far less waves of them. Sometimes an arena can be just a 1v1 against uh, two characters. That's exactly what we are predicting right now. An arena with a 1v1 based format to it. And an itchy, um, itchy lip to go along with it all. No, that's what we like to see. We like to see the uh, batch being filled with glue so that then, or goo even, so that then we can, um, <laughs> Acquire ourselves some barrel baddies to hopefully heal ourselves up from. Okay, there we go. I love the fact that I say that we need to let the barrels go into the goop in order to form the barrel baddies and then proceed to destroy the barrels before they can do such things. There's the food we were looking for. But yeah, the goop is so terrified of the dirty colours. Like that purple looks so boiling warm and disgusting. Yeah, you know, it's far more terrifying than it is regularly. Ouch, this is fine, this is fine. Well, you should be aware that you're not the first bad guy I've handled with, considering that I have defeated all of your friends for far. You know, you'd think that would be obvious to a man of your um, IQ-ality, which again is not that is that because I said so. This is fine. Okay, there you go. Like I say, this is fine. In fact, so fine that we've even hit Dr. Craig Case's damage cap. Oh, that reminds me. Speaking of bad guys, yeah, I'm checking it out, but can we please hurry this along? You know, I have five minutes to end off the episode with. Yeah, five minutes before my story just goes kaput. Yeah, that should be long enough. Here's hoping. Yeah, friends, that is not likely, my friend. Oh, shoot, looks like I called it in anyway. My bad. Goodbye. Oh, what do you mean you don't leave any food? No, that's just inconvenient. If you're gonna stop by, at least stop by with some food. You know, it's like a barbecue. You don't show up to barbecue empty handed. Even though when you do show up to barbecue with food, of course, uh, as, as, um, barbecue hosts, we uh, are expected to cook it, and then when we do cook it, we wind up with uh, more food than we can handle anyways. So that's where the lack of need to come with food, like, when you're involved in a fight for barbecue, if you're told not to bring food, you don't bring food, otherwise you will just be overhauled with food, and then we'll have, you know, cook too much and just wind up putting a lot of it to waste. But of course, if you are asked for food, then bringing food, you know, is just kind of like, a mandatory requirement, or at least, you know, it would be quite easy to do something. That's just how it goes. If you don't ask, then you don't receive. You don't receive. If you don't ask anyone, don't expect to receive neither. You know, you can't be expecting the stuff that you haven't asked for, hence the saying, ask and you shall receive. I mean, like, not always. If you ask for something, don't expect it. This is the key one I'm trying to make here. Why the heck I went off on this tangent, I have no clue, but here we are. With this tangent anyways, and of course a time limit which is cr really crunchy, and that's the most intense part about this boss fight right now. Not whether I will actually beat it, but whether I will beat it in time before my phone runs out of storage. So the face cam just kind of dies, it's because my phone did. Well, it did die, just ran out of storage, but you know, dying and out of storage, they're basically the same thing. Ow! He has a jump of a werewolf, which is appropriate, after all, he is a werewolf. Yeah, I guess we should. That would be not cool of you, man. Not cool. Oh, I'm not yawning, you're yawning. Okay, come on guys, give me some food. Ah, oh, that's not food. Okay, here we go, we're gonna put this close. But hey, where would the excitement be otherwise?
Ouch. Big ouch. Come on, missiles, let's do this. Hey guys, can I have my personal space here? There's a bad note going on, so social distancing is pretty much required. And I have my missiles to keep yourselves at bay, but you guys are so melee oriented, it's awfully rude. You know, I consider social distancing, it'll be nice if you guys could too. Now just drop already, thank you, appreciate it. Okay, watch out for the spinny legs of doom. Okay, where is he coming down? Oh, there he is, the starters. Okay, move it. There you go. Let's not get hit by his old buddy, Mr. Target, shall we? Sounds like a plan. Okay, let's not get hit by Mr. Target again. Wait, we can hover right over it? Well, Chopper's broken in this fight. Look at us, we're literally flying above it. <laughs> I almost feel sorry for Dr. Crankcase right now. This utter annihilation that he just found himself on the receiving end of. And just like that, we are still no deaths 11 chapters in. And better yet, we completed this with plenty of storage left on my phone. In fact, 58 seconds worth remaining to be exact, so you know. Chances are it's not going to last past this cutscene, so that's just about it, really. <laughs> you can say goodbye to our face cam for that, I suppose. Holy or better yet, you know, it's just going to be some deeps too, which we're going to skip past, you know, because I completely forgot that there is no cutscene there, which is the most convenient thing that could possibly occur towards the tail end of this here episode. So I want to thank you guys so much for watching, and I will be returning to you next Monday for the start of the final session of this here uh, series. And until that moment arises, uh, peace.